I just recently uploaded a video talking about Bitwig and, and hopefully you guys see what's happening. You know, for a lot of you guys, Bitwig is still something a lot of people haven't heard of. Um, I have a good gentleman here, Harold Bones, written a comment on the, on the channel and let me know that, OK, this this was actually pointing towards the sampler and how it doesn't have a slice function. And because I'm used to Ableton, I was kind of looking for something that's just kind of associated inside of the sampler. And this gentleman wrote to the wrote to the video and said, uh, Big Wig does have a slicer, bro. These are the steps. Right. So he's basically saying just drag a track drag the loop or whatever into into the multi track window and i was trying to and i was puzzling my brain like what do you mean by that so if you actually drag a sampler on the actual track i don't think he meant just drag it in there because i tried that and it didn't work that way you have to actually drag the sample inside the project itself and then you go for the option that he mentions here that will say slice and fold now I've done this option before in the past. I just forgot about it. And so I appreciate you, Harold, for writing this. Now I'm like, okay, hmm. Now I've I've learned this technique looking at a video. I don't remember what video that was, but I certainly forgot about it. And I know this to be true when I made the statement on the video saying that um there's no slicing function because I've seen several videos of people saying the same thing. But I know I have people that's trying to figure out how to do this. And this is the workaround. It might be better. So you got to go to your browser somewhere and say like that's the track we want to work with. It's going to drag it in real quick. So in this case, it's supposed to warp to the tempo of the track as we can kind of hear it now say i wanted to start this track like right there i can so do that we wanted to start at five and it really don't matter where you put it i'm just doing it just this is just a thing i do okay so i can leave it at four bars or whatever right so that's that's my loop and so now we go and right click and say slice fold and we have several options where we can go with this. We can go to slice the drum machine, which is where we will, where we will land. I probably wouldn't go with slice the multi sample because I tried that and it don't work, but let's do it anyway, just to show you guys. So we got several options. We got the pre and post deal. And what he was saying, he said, hit the slice raw. Okay. But what's, what's most important is you have to be able to say, do we want this to chop eight notes or we want it to chop 16 or 32s or even the one four for, you know, this is, that's up to, to you, totally up to you. But um, in this case, let's just go for one eighth for now. Let's just see what we render. So what it did was it created another track and it actually put a MIDI notes that clam all the way up chromatically. <laughs> but we don't need that. The first thing you do is delete that. But what we are looking at is here in the drum. Well, sorry, I thought I was in the drum sampler, but this is the this is the multi sampler. I just wouldn't work from here. You know, this to me, this this doesn't make sense, you know, but you I don't know, maybe if you, if you work with an instrument, maybe like a, a like a, a long bass note then maybe this will work for that but this is certainly not what we're trying to do so let's go back to this track here and instead of that we're going to go to slice the drums so the cool thing about this right here is if you go with with bounce and slice you at least have the option to bounce in place the effects that you so say you put effects on this track then you can have options to post fade the, the bounce down which makes this really cool and i guess this will be like more advanced but let's go to slice raw why not yeah let's keep everything the same 
we're going to do that and now when we go here inside of the drum rack we should see sorry it's going to be this track here so because we did one eighth it's only 16 at a time so one eighth is half of that so it spit out 32 so maybe we should do one fourth maybe right or not so what happened was instead of the what we're used to seeing is you know one sampler that will have a bunch of the slicing in here you know so we can see it what he did was it it has several instances of the sampler inside each of these here so each pad you see what it's doing each pad has the sampler but it chopped it at where we said we want to chop it so i'm guessing that's the workaround that this obviously obviously is the workaround uh, it, it might be better you know i don't know so with that being said is every every pad has a dedicated sampler associated with it you know now the the interesting concept to this is that say that we we want to revert back to maybe i don't know we did one eighth right maybe we want one fourths instead because it gives us a little bit more information when it comes to these chops and actually yeah say that that's what we want to do well you can't just go and change it to one fourth or one sixteenth or one thirty two you can't just go and change something you can definitely come in here and do this make it bigger but that's time consuming because now we got to go to each and end you know what i'm saying now the other thing is that you have to remember to turn on this midi button here where it says follow play notes in order to see the drum pads jump and we can see in real time what's happening down here and then in this case because it created two different banks when we reach the top it'll actually shift you can't i don't know if you can see that but down here you can see it kind of shifting between now that's something i don't think that able to do or maybe it does and i haven't paid attention but basically everything is following you can see everything here and it's looking like it's the same sample but it's not they're they're different they're like separate <laughs> these are separate samplers okay so if we wanted to make more sense because everything seems like super choppy so let's not go with one eighth obviously and and also that is a big gap anyway we got two bars worth of information let's go with one fourths instead so now it's going to give us 16 slices all right so this track right here is what we want so say we do want to like make an adjustment here we do want okay so i mean that's how you have to do it here in in bitwig versus it just dropping into a sampler and the sampler has the functions to slice or be the one shot like most of us are used to in ableton so this is the workaround and like i say this might be a good thing because because it is a separate sampler on each pad I think you probably have a little bit more customization now because everything is separate. And also the thing about this, I know that I know that inside of the mixer, I'm pretty sure that I can open this up to each track. 
So I'm going to get rid of this one just so we're not confusing ourselves. Get rid of that one. And then we can also get rid of that if we want to. And also that, because that's not, this is just a chromatic MIDI information. But yeah, when we go back to the mixer, we can't see. But Ableton does this as well. The cool thing about this is that if you want to put separate processing on any of the pads, you can do so here. Just add whatever, you know, whatever your, your plugin is. You can do it to each of these. I'm not sure if you can do that in Ableton. Now that I think about it, like if it's in a multi-track deal and we open this up, I don't remember seeing an option to add individual. Maybe, maybe it's there or maybe the workaround in Ableton is no, because the sampler is just one deal. And I think whatever you put, I don't know. I, I forget. I have to verify that. But we see Bitwig and what's happening here. If I want to put a effect here inside of, say, like I want to put something there. And I'm going to do something weird just so we can hear the difference. Okay, there is definitely some reverb happening here. So what we did was put reverb that's only associated with the kick. All right, which is cool. And I, yep, you can see it through here. It's on the track. So that's how that works. I hope I clear that up for some of you guys that want to use Bitwig and or using Bitwig and didn't know that you can slice. Well, this is how you have to do it. It's definitely a couple of more steps that you have to do in order to get it there, but it can be done. And, you know, I'm going to just fall back on that one. It's almost like you duplicated the sample several times now. So now you can just do whatever you want. Now, I won't take back the part where I said more warping, more, you know, warping engines that can do some some other really cool things because Ableton does have that on lock. But Bitwig is not slouching either. So I'm going to fall back. There's definitely some opportunities here to, to do some crazy weird things all right ella b culture lifestyle governed by art